I see, but first place, Al Shemansky was in Tillion de Raladon. Second place, Tor Greifle. You mixed it up in Tillion and Arceus again, bud. <laughs> <laughs> Did I say it again? You said Intellion Duraliadon, yeah. Dude, I cannot get this straight. Okay. <laughs> and that's yet another DDG win. All right, welcome to Draw Gamers to this week's episode of the DDG podcast. Uh, this week, I have Nicholas Moffat and Andrew Hedick, Hedrick joining the show. Uh, how are y'all doing today? Doing well. I'm doing pretty good. Good, good. Um, got a fun episode planned for today. Um, we these players are fresh off of a busy league cup league challenge weekend. Um, Nick took a league challenge down over the weekend, and yep. Andrew got close to taking a cup down, but uh, apparently the the parking lot finals um it's a little little much for him. So it's a little too cold. <laughs> little yeah, look chilly out there. Um, so we're gonna kind of run oh, run through. Uh, their cup challenge experience. Uh, give a little discussion on that. Then we'll kind of recap their UIC runs. Uh, we're only you know a week and a half removed from that event, and then we'll take a look forward to, um, you know what they would play if they were heading out to a cup or challenge this weekend, and uh, what to expect for the Portland Regionals, which is actually going to be uh, a weekend after this one. So, why don't we start with you, Nick? Um. You took down the challenge. Why don't you tell us what you played? How'd it go? Um, was this your first experience back after what three plus years of yeah, of sure. no league challenges? Yeah. So Saturday I had a league challenge. Uh, that one was only like ten people or so. It's so only three rounds. Uh, won that one with the same Kyogre Moltres deck that I used at EYC. I took out uh, the second man if he put in the second level ball because I wasn't expecting many lost box mirrors. And I just wanted the extra consistency. Uh, that one read really smoothly. It was best of three, but only three rounds. So we were in and out pretty quick. Um, and then I had the cup on Sunday. That was six rounds, best of three. And they didn't start till 1 p.m. So that one took forever. Uh, ended up getting top eight there. Uh, ended up losing in top eight uh, because of a sudden death situation against Mu VMAX, where there was only five minutes going left into uh, left going into game three because they said we're going to only do 50 minutes. To, because it was 8 p.m. by the time they started top eight. Uh, so fair enough there. But then, unfortunately, uh, they were able to take the first two prizes. And the way my deck is built, you know, you can't really put on much pressure until they're down to three prizes. And then you can start taking knockouts with the Moltres. So uh, they were able to to take that one there. So I ended up with top eight finish uh, there. I think I, I would have liked to see that one have been best of one uh, for Swiss, at least. So then could have left more time for top cut and gotten out of there a bit earlier i didn't get home till past midnight because i was uh, about three hours away from that <laughs> one a lot as well so um so you, probably, did, uh, probably not going to travel that far again <laughs> did they have best of three for swiss in the challenge and the cup yeah yeah damn okay so for the challenge it was fine because it was only three rounds but then for the cup it was six rounds plus top eight so just took absolutely forever yeah. Okay. We'll we'll cover that here in a little bit because that's been something on Twitter that's been heavily discussed. Uh, mm -hmm. I think be before we'll we'll get into it, but it's it's been a hot topic. So, um, but swinging it over to Andrew. So why don't you uh give us a little bit of your uh tournament run? Um, you know what were you playing? How did you end up in the parking lot for finals? All that kind of good stuff. So I played kind of like the Turbo Lawson deck. Uh, with like the Dragonite and the Raikou and stuff. Also with this guy Steel Stone though, which I do like in the deck. But um, played that to the League Cup. It was best of one, and Lawson doesn't always draw perfectly in best of one, which can be a little bit of an issue. But I was able to make it a top eight, and um, I I did feel like the deck ran pretty well. But the the tournament took a really long time, even though it was best of one. It started a little bit late, and then you know you play best of three in top eight, and by the time we got to to finals, it was already like nine or ten o'clock and the store was supposed to be closed a few hours ago and they'd already stayed pretty late to let us stay there so the owner seemed kind of like they wanted to close it so we didn't exactly get kicked out but it was kind of like you know but we'll go out to the we'll go and fly that play. you you send out <laughs> put outside yeah. yeah and then we got out the parking lot that we were like well let's just play here um but it's a little <laughs> bit hard to play lost zone outside for sure um there's a lot of things you have to keep track of uh so definitely didn't play perfectly in that game, but overall pretty fun and pretty good deck. Did you have judges still? And like, was the TO still around for the yeah. finals match? 
Yeah, he was he was still there. It was just the store wanted to close. So. That's wild. I would I would I would be pretty upset if that was the case. Um, it was it was all good. <laughs> so how many uh how many rounds did you play in Swiss and it was best of one? Yeah, six rounds, best of one in Swiss. Okay. Yeah, I mean I think that's that's like pretty typical. How many players did y'all have for I think like maybe a forty ish players? Okay. Yeah, I think we had like thirty five or so in mine. It's been really diverse. Like, you know, I played in the challenge not this past weekend, but the, the weekend prior. And we had like 33 players, but like more than half of them were junior and seniors. So it ended up being 14, right. 15, like masters in the challenge. Um, you know, and I, I like on Twitter, there's stores where people were showing up three hours before the event started to make sure that they got registered. So it's kind of been all over the place. Um, and I think something that's really been kind of interesting is before COVID, you would never play in a challenge where it wasn't best of one Swiss, right? I have never played in a challenge. Oh, I've played in best of three challenges before, at least um, where I grew up, they had one store that would always do best of three and they would do expanded too. They would always do expanded best of three. So was that usually like on the weekend? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So like all of our challenges would be like Monday through Friday generally. Okay. Yeah, I guess you would have like best of one because the stores didn't want to be there till until 10. So but what is, what's y'all's opinion on on best of one versus best of three in challenges or cups? Like are you I, I would imagine you you know, I would probably at least prefer to play best of three in cups because um you don't want to lose kind of off a bad draw and not have the chance to come back. And if you get if you get one loss in some cups, it's actually decently hard to make top eight. If you get two, generally you're out of it. So what do y'all think about the the format of, of how these cups and challenges have been ran so far? Um, I would definitely prefer to play in best of three cups because you know the variants can be kind of bad in best of one. You know, you don't really want to drive a couple hours and just, you know, open a dead hand and run around and all of a sudden you just can't lose again the entire tournament, which feels pretty bad. Um, but you know, also you don't like stores don't always have time to run a huge best of three tournament it can go really late so i can understand why they're sometimes best of one and stuff but i had the option to choose i would rather play best of three in a cup yeah i'm the same uh i would rather have just more games to play and then the only issue is the time constraints you know a lot of these are starting at like 1 p.m but i think if you're going to have a six round best of three cup but then top eight cut afterwards, uh, you know, you got started earlier than like, you know, 11 a.m. or something if you want to finish at a reasonable hour. So, yeah, uh, for TOs, I think that's just something to keep in mind, you know, especially if you want to do best at three, then definitely don't start it as late as one or two p.m. You're going to have to start it earlier than that. Yeah. And a lot of stores that have been around quite a while, like, are used to that. You know, you most like the magic stores are used to being open to like 11 p.m. midnight. So mm-hmm. they have no problem like running a, running a uh, tournament till that late and then you have other stores that will shut down at like 9 p.m um yeah. they get pissed off at you if you come in at like 8 50 and want a 50 card order right so um mm-hmm. it really depends on the store and like what kind of uh history they have with, with the different games um so it's a fun fun discussion i i mean my opinion is definitely like the challenges keep them best of one keep them short um hopefully like you can be two or three hours of a, a quick tournament and then you know cups are just kind of like mini regional so it, it'd be better to be best of three run six uh six rounds if you get that many players and and you know it makes it a little bit more fair for especially for like lost zone decks because you know in the challenge i played at i saw twice uh a lost zone matchup be done in less than three minutes because one person up and comfy and then the other person just got knocked out with a uh grammar ant so yeah. you, that would suck if you drove three hours and that was your round one so sure, sure. i had a couple yeah, of passes won. in my cup that didn't feel good but. oh i won every game one so <laughs> would have been fine for me i guess nice um i was also gonna ask you like what what kind of um do y'all see anything kind of out of the ordinary that in your local scene that you hadn't seen at EUIC or, you know, prior to coming to a uh, challenger cup, anything interesting out there? So I saw, at least in my area, it's a lot more Mew and a lot more Gardevoir 
and then less of like Lugia. I only saw I think one Lugia at this at the cup. Um, but top eight was half half of it was Mew. Um and that ended wow. up taking first, second, and a top four placement. Uh, and then at the challenge the day before, I think half the room was Mew as well. Um, so five out of ten players were all were all Mew, something like that. So hmm. I can kind of agree with that as well. There's definitely a lot of people who play Mew, and I've also seen less Lugia. And also, I RCS decks are really popular in my mind as well, at least compared to like how popular I think they normally are. Like okay. I played against an RCS Giratina. Um, and then I also played against Brendan Eifert. He was playing like his RCS Pika Espeon deck that he played at EUIC. Um, and I think I saw some other people on RCS as well. So that might, that might be a little bit more common in locals, I feel like. Yeah, I didn't see any RCS, I don't think. Um, but yeah, it totally varies by the area, you know, what players are around, what they like to play there. So I guess I just live in a Mew heavy area, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, I, I think locals right. in general might play a lot of Mew. But... That's true. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And then, yeah, there was uh, some ride on as well, more than I would expect to see at a major event, probably. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think people probably tend to gravitate more towards like the simpler decks, if you will. Um, just because, you know, if they're less experienced, you know, it's one of their first tournaments, which tends to be the case with uh local players you know if they have you know a lot of times you'll run into people who have never been to a regional or only been to one one or two regionals you know in their whole time playing pokemon so definitely uh the skill level compared to i guess that's not true because still the average at a regional is not crazy high but uh, you know i guess andrew and i are just used to playing against you know the higher up people which yeah y'all are used to playing day two where it's the higher yeah. so, skill, skill average but but yeah i got it's probably still you know it's probably still higher at a regional because you know if you're traveling for the event then you're, you're probably a bit more dedicated to the game so it definitely depends on your area too because like yeah you know in my yeah. area in a city of like seven or eight million people you've got probably 10 to 15 people they go to every challenge every cup that are highly experienced if you're sure. in a smaller area it's it's you know less so and it, yeah I, it's kind of not surprising to see like Inteleon and Mew you, you probably have people that are kind of had that deck for a while especially Mew Mew's been good for what like two years now almost like yeah. so you know people just kind of invest in that deck and and rode with it same thing with Inteleon like it was good for the time it came out in Billion Stars, all the way up to when Lugia came out. So, kind of Wait, what are you about? into into uh, Arceus. My bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Arceus. <laughs> I did yeah. see one Inteleon Rapid Strike that almost nearly made top eight. I think they lost. They lost the win. Yeah. Yeah, I I tried to play the Inteleon Urshifu on stream last Friday. This past Friday, like after playing nothing but Lugia for like six months, it like melted my mind trying to do well with Intel and Urshifu. Um but it just needs practice. So yeah, I still haven't still haven't tried that one out. From from yeah. my experience my opponents do not usually draw very well when they're playing that deck. So I think it should be pretty good against Lost Zone, but I feel like I'm usually beating them anyway. So yeah. Lost Zone. Yeah, it is hard to draw well and, right? and you have to just plan like three three turns ahead with the damage counters, right? Like it's probably um a little bit similar to Sable Eye, but like you really gotta lay down the damage counter as well, move the Alakazam well, and it's yeah. it can be tricky. Do um, they not play four research? The Inteleon? Yeah. Um, I have to look out. Let's see. Maybe they should. <laughs> they probably should. Yeah. I'm pretty sure they do. They put like uh let's see, yeah, four research and yeah. a, a kind of mix of Clara, Melanie, Serena, Karina's focus. Yeah, that, um, that was something I talked about um, on an earlier podcast. I was like, well, you know, Gardevoir is actually pretty good if you played research. And then Tord went and got second in the UIC with four research, right? So, mm -hmm, yeah. Was it three or four? I think four. Uh, and in Tord's three. list? Yeah. I'd have to pull it up, but I think it was four. The thing with Inteleon, though, is like you're always just one <laughs> card short, right? You can get something off the artillery. You can get the energy. You can get the Urshifu, but you're always like just a card away from getting yeah. what you need yeah for research in in a towards card of our list yeah yeah oh. that's what i've been testing before uic and it was really good but i just didn't want to play guard of war for whatever reason so well and good i mean i still ended up getting top 16 with with my deck so turned out turned out all right 
Yeah, it's a good segue back to EYC. So we all want to kind of, uh, you know, talk about what y'all played, what your experiences were. Um, you know, uh, I know, Nick, you played, like you mentioned, Lost Zone with Kyogre, um, and actually a dark package with Galarian yep. Wolfrays. And then I'm actually not even sure what you played, Andrew. What were well, you on? I, I played Lugia, and it didn't go the best, which has kind of gotten me off of Lugia in this format now. Oh, shit. Okay, so the Lugia King is off of a... Yeah, not not a fan of it in this format anymore. Yeah, me, me neither. Okay, let's start with you, Nick. So you started, what, 2-2 two, two and ran it all the way yeah. back for a top 16 finish? So Yeah, didn't lose after that. Uh, <laughs> I was wearing the uh, the hat that they gave out the with the Eevee and the Sylveon. And at first, I had it in the front. And then when I was 2-2, two, two, I was like, all right, we got to turn it on. Flip the hat backwards, didn't lose <laughs> after that. So <laughs> kind of turned on the gas there, yeah. Yeah, how do you, so uh, just give us a little rundown. Like, what uh, what were your matchups like? You know, how did the deck run? Did it, was it, uh, was the field as you expected? Or were there any surprises? Uh, I didn't play against any Mew or Gardevoir, which is what I put the dark package in for. <laughs> um, I played against a lot of Lugia um, and then a couple other random decks. Uh Lots of lots of Giratina as well, I think, and Lost Zone Mirrors. And then yes, I think just one Gudra, two Darkrai V Star for some reason. Uh, a couple different are yeah, I think three Arceus uh Giratina. Uh and then a couple Lost Zone decks, one with Giratina, one or two with Giratina, one or two regular ones. Yeah. Nice. Do you remember how many times you were able to get the uh, Kyogre playoff? Um, well, in the Lugia matchup, that's kind of your your win condition. So, um, all the games that I won against Lugia, okay. um, which was I think a slight majority. Yeah, I, I remember I lost once to Lugia, and tied tied to it once, and then beat the rest. Um. Was this is this the most consistent like list you'd be able to get? You know, a game ending finish with Kyogre. I think it's pretty up there. Yeah. So for the cups, like I said, I was cutting the second mana fee for the second level ball, which you know helps with the overall consistency as well. Um. But yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of built just to thin the deck. You've got the pokey stops. You don't play any VIP pass and instead play the all the regular ball cards because you can play those down, you know, during your turn. Um, so then when you get hit with Judge or Roxanne, you know, obviously you want to try to play around Roxanne if you can. But when you get hit with that Judge, then you're going to have less dead cards in your deck to draw into and you kind of just thin the deck down to the point where you can kind of get off that guaranteed Kyogre for four or five energy. Gotcha. Okay. And Andrew, uh, so you kind of mentioned not a big fan of Lugia after this event like what happened uh what what are you switching up to if uh you're off of Lugia for this format um I mean I had I had a lot of games where I felt like my opening hand was just not very good I, I double bricked the set against Wasta and ended in like five minutes um one time um I don't know I've I feel like the deck like is not quite as consistent and also when you do set up, it's all, it's not as strong as it was before. It felt like before, you know, when you won, you could just one shot whatever you want. You could put your Illuminion back in the deck. Um, and you had like way more options against other decks in general. And now it kind of feels like, you know, you just set up your thing and you just attack and you're like kind of just against a lot of matchups. You're like, Gar if, like against Gardevoir, if they draw really hot, like you can't win either with Lugia, which it doesn't, it just doesn't feel quite as good to play. So didn't do well at UIC, went 5 3 1. Um, so after that, I switched to Lost and I played in the in the big cup that they had on the next day. Got top thirty two, I think, out of like two hundred people or something with mm -hmm. Lost Zone. And ever since then, I've been trying to get better at it because I really hadn't played it too much. And then, yeah, played in some online tournaments and took it to the cup this last weekend. Nice. Have you? Did you try at all the RC list with Duraludon, or were you going like straight? uh the kind of typical list that we've seen without the, the draw you mean? what's that uh 
What did you, you say, Walker? Perseus with Duraludon. I was saying you mean Lugia with Duraludon. Yeah, I'm sorry. Lugia with did you try Lugia with Duraludon? Yeah. So yeah, we liked we talked about it a little bit the day before. Uh but I ended up not playing. I wanted to make my deck the most consistent I could, but that might have ended up actually being a mistake because a lot of people did play their own Duraludons. And obviously if they play Duraludon and you don't, it can be just like you can't win at all. I actually tied a Lugia with Duraludon. He didn't set up very well one game and I was able to take out a tie. But overall, I mean, I feel like like you, I, I still didn't feel like that deck was very consistent. And then, you know, you have to fit in. If you fit in Duraludon, your deck's obviously going to be less consistent. So just not a big fan of Lugia in this format, even though it is definitely a strong deck. Not the biggest fan of playing it anymore. Okay. And then um, let's just kind of like go back and look at the, um, you know, finishing decks here uh, in first place. You know, we, we talked about this last week in the podcast, obviously right after UIC, but first place, Al Shemansky with Inteleon Duraludon. Second place, Torv Red You mixed it up Inteleon and Arceus again, bud. <laughs> <laughs> Did I say it again? You said Inteleon Duraludon, yeah. Dude, I cannot get this straight. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Owen, please cut this. Uh, Al Shemansky <laughs> had Arceus Duraludon, Tor Reclef, Gardevoir, Paula Meza, Mew and Pedro Torres with Lawson. Um, okay, first off, was this the most stacked top four at any international so far? Got to be up there. Yeah, I international is usually have really stacked top four in yeah, general, yeah. but yeah, this is definitely another good one. So, and like in recent memory, Tor Reckless has always been in top four or the finals, so it's hard to hard to beat that. Yeah. Yeah, so what do y'all think of, you know, not only the winning deck, but just the ver- variety of uh, top four and the top eight, if you want to extend it out, because the other decks in the top eight were Gudra, Lawson, Lugia, and Maridon, which I don't know how Maridon made top eight, but yeah. He didn't hit any loss box. I looked at the, <laughs> the Pokestats live page. He only played against one day one and tied it and then beat like four Gudras and some other random stuff. So, yeah. Yeah, um, I was gonna say that I think from the results we can see that like Mew is kind of underrepresented, and I think um from the like statistics of play percentage that Mew was not played very heavily, but it's obviously still a very good deck. So, and then what I saw from my my locals was that Mew was doing very well. So I think um Mew is definitely a deck that that should be seeing more play. Um, yeah. And what what do you think about the uh the winning deck? Arceus Thraladon. Uh you, the the consensus last week with uh it was Gabe and Piper, but they were like, mm-hmm. this deck is not gonna be, you know, uh viable moving forward. This is like a kind of one shot uh, type thing. Um do y'all agree, disagree? It, it's interesting because I think it won uh the late night last night, even though that thing had all the trouble in the world, but what do you think of that deck moving forward? I mean, I think oh. Arceus is just strong. Um, the partners may swap in or out, you know, depending on the meta. So if Lugia falls down in play, okay, then you don't need to rally it on anymore. Maybe you go for Pikachu or something instead. I have no idea, right? Um, whatever is, you know, kind of going to counter the the current meta game. So. Um, yeah, I feel like like the decks definitely can be pretty good, especially because people weren't really super prepared for it. I did test a similar deck to this going up to the event, but I didn't like it very much. But I guess it it did end up being a pretty good meta call. But I don't know. Like it, it, I think Torture even won the finals, and his deck had like almost no answers. But I feel like, especially because people will probably be putting in answers like in Gardevoir to the Volpix V Star to make the matchup even better. Um, and now obviously Lugias are all going to be playing their own answers to the Raladon, which means. Your own draw doesn't just auto win, although I think it still is a pretty good matchup. But yeah, like, if they just have the one draw on in Lugia and you're able to yeah. set up two. You're some some people play two, I think, but yeah, most people only play. Yeah, but one, can they so. power up two because they only have the three? I don't know three rainbow energy, so they still only be able to power up one. I don't. You know. can still bring yeah. back the uh, single strike energies, right? No, but not the because single strike energy only provides oh. dark fighting, so you need the, the metal, right? The yeah, and you can't one. earn the impact energy, and you can't so. earn for that one yeah yeah mm-hmm. so yeah i'd feel probably pretty good against lugia but maybe not quite as much of an auto win anymore um but overall i mean yeah the deck obviously is pretty good and i bet people will play it to local events but definitely not in quite as good of a position as it was at the uic mm-hmm. 
Yeah, it's is a little there bit... a better way to beat Gardevoir than Vulpix? Um, it like if you go to I don't I think you need Vulpix probably, but like Eifert's list um plays Vulpix and then it plays Espeon and Poncho, and mm -hmm. um that's like then you can't roll uh the Vulpix or anything and you can't mm -hmm. boss the Espeon, sure. so that can also that can right, make it harder okay. to win, but yeah. Sure. I think you probably need Volpix to be comfortable. And what is uh, Gardevoir's answer to Volpix? What can you fit in there to counter that? Just more gust or rope, right? Yeah. Gust and rope are both, like, more gust effects are very good. More ropes, um, like Moffat said, you can also play Path, and that turns off your abilities and lets you hit Volpix. So. Or the Mimikyu, yeah, which I, I don't... Like it's really it's weird though, because then you shut yeah. off your. Uh, but like, like, I I like I don't know if like they're not all good answers, but they're definitely like different thing cards that people are gonna play. I've seen people playing Mimikyu at my vocals as well. Yeah, the Mimikyu is decent, right? Because it has like this similar attack to Zashia, and it's just thirty x instead of thirty plus. But it does have less HP, so you. Can I think it like it. does more damage for energies on both active. Both yeah, it's like so. thirty for each active, but it only has one ninety, right? So then you can only put nine on yourself. So that's but like if you if your opponent has energies on, so you can do more damage. Yeah, so two seventy and then whatever they have. So if they have two energy, you can hit three thirty still. Yeah, that seems fun. Yeah, what do y'all think is the is towards list kind of the best God of War package out there? As you've, we've seen, like y'all mentioned, we've seen it with Mewtwo V Union. We've seen it with, um, there's some that will play Binet. There's some that will play, um, what was it y'all just Binet. mentioned? Yeah, Binet EX, where it's like yeah. an attack for the item cards in hand. Um, I have not seen that one. <laughs> it's floating out there. Uh, I don't know what your ELO is on PTCG Live, but I haven't seen that one. <laughs> I ain't playing it. Uh, but yeah, so towards list, or would you switch that up moving forward? What do y'all think? Um, I haven't tested any guard war after you i see personally but i think um you know my testing from before indicated that just having the four research is the way to go and then i think you can you can change other stuff around but i think that consistency core of um you know having all those draw supporters to to dig through the deck and find the pieces you need um get your curlies into play rare candy into guard of war all that um and then I didn't realize that Cresselia could snipe the bench, which is like a lot better than, <laughs> than I thought originally. I thought I just moved it onto the active, but you can, you know, if they like hit you with cram, then you can go for Cresselia and put the damage on like their Greninja or something and take that out. I guess that wouldn't be enough, but you can put like damage on Comfies and then they don't get the switch out of the active because you weren't killing their active. Yeah, you can like kill Comfy. Yeah, you can't kill Greninja because it has 130. But, and, but yeah. it makes it hard for you to use more flower selecting because you're not giving them a free pivot into Comfy every turn. Yeah. Which is something I found playing Boss Box against Guard War. I think, yeah. yeah, I think the Tord list is the best version, especially for like the best of one cups, because this version is going to definitely set up way more often. Mm -hmm. um, I've watched someone play the Mewtwo V Union one a bit, and it's definitely not the most consistent deck. It can have yeah. some pretty bad opening hands. Yeah, I played against the V Union one, and I was able to just. Um, spread with Sableye and not take any knockouts, so then he couldn't even summon the V Union. Um, Did he board lock himself? Yeah, he just he benched five guys on the bench, and then I just you know did Sableye, and um, I actually trapped Mew active because he he had prized like two energy and had you know eight or nine in the discard, and then he just couldn't move his Mew because I put five damage on it. Um, but yeah, the the plan was okay. I'll just you know board lock him, not let him get to Mew TV Union, and then I'll like and I had the Moltres that can uh, one shot in the return if he does go for it. Uh, so I was like, okay, you know, I'll go and just take three prizes in one turn, bench the Moltres that turn, and then it's kind of kind of checkmate there. Nice. All right, before we wrap it up, um for just the podcast and YouTube version here. Um, I'm going to have y'all just give me your top three decks at the moment, at this point, after EUIC and a weekend of League Cups and League Challenges, um, but in no particular ranking or anything like that, just your top three decks. 
uh, if you were headed out to a locals this weekend or uh, gearing up for the Portland Regional next weekend. Either or. Go ahead, Andrew. Uh, so I would say Gardevoir definitely be in the top three, um, like the toured version of Gardevoir. Uh, Lost Box would have to be in the top three as well. I really like the one with Sky Steel Stone and Forest Steel Stone. I feel like that gives you a lot of options, but really any Lost Box are pretty strong. Um, although make sure in best of one, you're playing a more consistent list. And also I would probably say Lugia has to be in my top three. Not that I would want to play it, but definitely a really strong deck and something that you will have to watch out for in tournaments because people will play it. Uh, yeah, personally, I would say probably Mew and then Gardevoir and Lost Box as my personal top three. And then I would say watch out for for Lugia and RCS as well. Um, those would probably be four and five for me. So. Okay, cool. Well, we'll get into a more in-depth discussion of that over on the uh, Cut or, t- cut or Tap um, members section of the podcast. Um, but we're going to wrap it up there for the DG podcast on YouTube and the uh audio podcast version before we wrap up do y'all want to shout out your socials or any other stuff you got going on yeah follow me on twitter at pokey hawkeye yeah you can follow me on twitter at nicholas moffat too uh feel free to reach out for coaching as well i've been uh, helping a lot of people master their lost box game um and obviously i you know, know how to play other decks too. So uh, feel free to reach out if you want to help preparing for cups, challenges, or any uh, regional events you got coming up. All right, perfect. Thank you all so much. Um, and thank you all for tuning in this week. Um, uh, please be sure to go check out deadrawgaming.com uh, for all your single seal product, um, everything you need for the IRL play. And then over at cuttertap.com, we're going to uh, continue to have uh you know several um articles a week from all six of our pro players on the ddg uh team and uh we'll also have the like i said the subscribers portion of this podcast we'll go for 10 or 15 more minutes uh much more in-depth uh look ahead to the portland regionals and uh what these guys would play you know if they were going out to a tournament this weekend so with that thank you all so much and we'll see you next time